Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a type of video I haven't done in a while. That's going to be a holster review. Now, you've seen this holster before in the review I did for my Canik TP9 SF Elite. I made a mention of the type of holster I was carrying it in. Uh, so this is going to be the dedicated video for that holster. If you haven't already seen that video, I would highly encourage you to check that out. I'll have links below as well as at the end of the video for those of you watching on your mobile devices. Um, so this holster is from Green Force Tactical. This is the first holster I've ever actually gotten from Green Force Tactical. Tactical. Um, and so far I can say just right off the bat I've been really impressed so if time is of the essence to you and you don't want to watch this whole video um, if you're thinking about getting one from Green Force Tactical I would recommend it it's this one's been really solid for me so far um, but if you want to see me qualify that and explain why I feel that way and why I feel comfortable saying that then definitely feel free to continue to watch the rest of this video now I'd heard about Green Force Tactical through a couple friends of mine they uh, have actually gone and take training classes at the same places as Christian Green the guy who owns Green Force Tactical. So it's he's the kind of guy who not only is making gear, but he actually goes out there and runs it himself, uh, which is something I really appreciate. You'd be amazed how many people make parts and work on guns who don't actually use them themselves. So to find someone who does that is pretty important. Not to, not to say that Christian Green's the only guy out there doing it. There's a lot of other people out there doing it, but he is one of them. So what I'm going to do at this point is bring you in a little bit closer uh, so you can look at some of the details on this holster, some of the things that I like, some of the things that I don't like, and then hopefully at that point we'll be able to wrap up our thoughts on this thing and you'll be able to decide whether or not it's worth the investment for you. Before I go too in depth with this thing, I'm gonna take this right side of the screen here to show you the breakdown and uh, the specifics on this style of holster. Obviously, Green Force Tactical is making a bunch of different models of holster for whatever you want, whether that be light bearing, and they have a bunch of different models that they make holsters for. Uh, but as far as this one, as you can see, just right off the bat, some of the things that I really like about it. It's a very stripped down design. There's not a whole lot of excess material anywhere. Um, for those of you who carry inside the waistband, especially appendix inside the waistband, the more material you have sticking out in other places, the less comfortable it tends to feel when you're carrying it. So having a lot of this extra stuff cut out is really nice. The only stuff that's here is what needs to be here uh, for the you know safety of, of uh, carrying this firearm. So, uh, right off the bat, one of my favorite features are the soft loops. For those of you who've seen my other uh, holster reviews, you know that I'm a big fan of the soft loops. For me, it just seems to be a lot more uh, secure of a retention method. Uh, if you've ever run holsters that have clips, like uh, even the Galco King Tuck that I've done a review on in the past, as much as I like that holster, I have run into situations where when I go to draw out the gun, the holster comes with it. And you're going to find that with, I would say, 90% of the clip style holsters out there. So having the soft loops prevents that from happening. And specifically on these ones, you have a single direction type of latch here. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little lip here at the bottom of the button. And what that means is you cannot clip it from top to bottom. You have to clip it from bottom to top. Now that may sound like kind of an insignificant thing for those of you who haven't had a holster like this, but what that means is while you're carrying it, the likelihood of this strap coming undone while you're carrying it, just moving about from uh, whatever you're doing day to day, uh, is significantly reduced. I've never had this come undone unless I personally unclip it to take it off at the end of the day. So that's a really nice thing. As you can see here, you have a couple different positions where you can uh, mount this to the holster. So depending on what diameter or belt you have, you can adjust it accordingly. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's you know anywhere from two inches down to one inch belt. Um, so what, wherever is gonna work in there for you, um, I usually find that leaving it all the way open works on pretty much whatever belt I'm running. One of the other things you'll notice, and the, really the only area for adjustment, is right here. And this is going to adjust the tension uh, for the retention of your holster. Uh, you might be able to see in there that there's a little, um, basically like a little rubber buffer in there to that can compress or retract to adjust that uh, that retention and you know it, it works exceptionally well now i can show you right now again this is for the canic tp9 sf elite um 
just putting it in the holster, this thing is very secure. I can shake this as much as I want and this isn't going anywhere. Yet when I need to draw it, it'll come out just, uh, just as I need it to. Uh, I'll even go ahead and roll in footage of me drawing from this holster. As again, as you can see, this thing retains exceptionally well. Even with that, it doesn't make it obnoxiously difficult to draw. So, you know, nothing to worry about there. Uh, one thing I want to mention too, is kind of the fit and finish of this holster. If you can see where the edges are, a lot of times holster companies, especially Kydex companies, will kind of cut the corners on these and not really polish up these edges. And uh, obviously you can tell here, Green Force Tactical really polishes up those edges. Is that a huge deal? No, but especially on the side that's facing your skin, if it's not polished up very well, it can really uh, be uncomfortable to carry. So I, I definitely like that that is there. And what that also tells you is they have a much higher attention to detail, which again is a really nice thing. That's something you want. Uh, now this specific model of holster, I should mention, uh, does prevent you from bumping that magazine release while it's in the holster. If you really try, you can kind of get in there. So it is nice, uh, depending on what you want. They, I believe, do have holsters where that area is cut out um, if, if you want to be able to activate your magazine release. However, if you've ever been in a situation when you're carrying concealed or you've accidentally bumped that just, you know, moving around, uh, you'll know that it can be good to have that covered up. So personal preference, but... Uh, but you know, you can decide what you want for yourself. And speaking of personal preference, I also want to talk about the options uh, for, you know, ordering a holster like this one. This one, uh, I went ahead with a gray color for the Kydex, which I actually really like. I didn't, I wasn't familiar with the color that I chose, but uh, it, it sounded like it might look good. So I decided to try it out and sure enough, I think it does. And then you can choose the color skull you want. So if you want it um, to blend in with the rest of your holster, you can have that. I believe if you don't want it at all, you can have it removed. Personally, I think that logo looks cool. And being that it's Green Force Tactical, I went ahead and did the green skull there. Um, personally, I think that's a pretty cool logo. And uh, considering this is gonna be carried inside the waistband, it doesn't really matter to me what color it is. I just think that that green looks really good. Again, considering it's called Green Force Tactical. Now this is the first holster that I've gotten from Green Force Tactical. It's the only holster I've had from Green Force Tactical. Uh, and just FYI, I did pay for this. So, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not buying a review off me. And I can honestly say ever since I got this canic here, I've been carrying it in this holster. It's been uh, really, really warm lately, unfortunately, here in Oregon. And I can say even with sweating, this thing has been really comfortable for me to wear. I know when it comes to Kydex, it can be personal preference. Some people just don't think it feels comfortable. For me, I thought this, car this holster was great. It was very easy to carry all day long with no discomfort whatsoever. But you know, I know that's gonna come down to individual preference for you guys, so you can make up your mind for yourself. And then one thing I wanna to mention too before I forget, as far as uh, some of the features of this, you can tell if I draw this thing out where the front sight goes into the holster, uh, you have plenty of clearance. So if you ever want to replace these sights with an aftermarket set of sights, say excess big dots, you're not going to worry about uh, it being able to clear the holster. It's going to fit in there just fine, which is exactly what we what you want. I have had custom Kydex holsters in the past from other companies where I put on excess big dots, all of a sudden it didn't fit in the holster anymore. And then I had to sit there with a, a blow dryer and heat it up to be able to reform it to fit my sights. That's not going to be an issue here, which is something I appreciate. Now really there's not a whole lot else to talk about. This is a very simple holster. It's a very effective holster. And uh, before I get too far ahead of myself there, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up our thoughts on this thing. All in all, I really like this holster. Again, I'd carried it for months uh, when I was carrying the Canik TP9. I have since switched back to my Glock 19, so I'm not carrying this holster much anymore. However, 
Um, if you guys have seen the videos that I did at TriggerCon up in Tacoma, I was talking to Enforce, and they're gonna be sending me uh, some of their, at least one of their a new APLs. So once I get that, I do plan on picking up another Green Force tactical holster that'll house that uh, Glock 19 with the APL, just so I can, can A, carry the Glock 19, and B, get some more exposure to Green Force tactical. Again, I'd heard a lot of really good things about them, so, for me, it was kind of a no-brainer when I was looking for a holster for the Canik to pick one of these up. And they do make holsters for a lot of different brands of gun to include the Canics. There's not a whole lot of companies out there who are making holsters for the Canik TP9 series of pistols. So knowing that Green Force Tactical was making them, uh, again, made it a really easy choice. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to any custom Kydex holster manufacturer is there may be a lead time. I can say with Green Force Tactical, I, I, I'm not even sure if I waited at all. This might have been one of their like in stock items. Um, but obviously if you have kind of a, uh, a more unique pistol that you're getting holster made for or you're making it with a certain type of light, that may up that lead time a little bit, but I, I'm pretty sure on Green Force Tactical's website, they do have a uh, an alert that'll tell you about what type of timeline to expect when you order a holster. So that's a really nice thing. The last thing you want is to place a holster for, uh, place an order for a holster for a gun that you just got. And now you're waiting, you know, one or two months for that holster to show up. Meanwhile, your, your gun is just sitting in, in a box somewhere, not being able to be worn because you don't have a holster for it. Um, so, that is one of the nice things with a company like Green Force, at least as of now, again, their lead times seem to be pretty short. One of the things that I forgot to mention when I was showing the close-up, probably the only thing I don't like about this specific holster is the fact that you cannot tuck with it the way that the uh, belt loop mounts to the holster. You cannot tuck a shirt back behind that. I do believe that they have holsters where you can do that, this one cannot, just an FYI in case you were wondering, uh, this one you cannot tuck behind. Um, but like I said, I do believe they have some where you can actually do that. But really that's the only downside with this holster that I've found so far. And again, I carried it for months in, you know, medium hot weather to hot weather to pretty cold weather, everything in between. Uh, and again, I found it ex extremely comfortable. Uh, but then again, I'm used to carrying appendix inside the waistband. So, uh, especially a inside the waistband with a light. So stepping down to something like this just made it even more comfortable. Uh, so like I said, I hope to get some more Green Force Sactual stuff in the future. And if I do, obviously you guys will see it here on the channel. I'll be doing reviews of it as, as I get exposed to it and as I'm able to use it. Uh, if you guys have any experience with Green Force Sactual stuff, go and throw those uh, experiences in the comment section down below. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of trying to get as much uh, information for people trying to make a decision as possible. Um, but everything I have heard so far has been really positive with these guys. Uh, if you have recommendations for other holster manufacturers, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below as well. I'm always uh, interested to hear what you guys are carrying out there. Uh, but please, for the love of God, if you carry an urban holster, or excuse me, an urban carry holster, just don't tell me. Uh, I don't want to have to think any less of you guys. So just ignorance is bliss in that case. Uh, but if you have other Kydex manufacturers that you like, uh, go ahead and throw those in the comment section as well. Uh, if, if that comment pissed you off, I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comment section. You're probably already typing away furiously. So go ahead and just hit enter on that comment. But anyway, with that said, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.